Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be jumping into DaVinci Resolve and taking a look at how you can create YouTube thumbnails inside the video editing software. Now, I don't make all of my thumbnails in DaVinci Resolve, but lately I've actually have been because I find it quite efficient just to have the video editing software open. So while it's open, you know, build the thumbnail and all that sort of stuff whilst I'm uploading my videos. So I thought I'd show you how I actually achieve it. So we're gonna show you how I made this thumbnail inside DaVinci Resolve, and it's really, really easy. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Here we have my video clip edited on the timeline, or at least we're gonna pretend it's edited. So this, obviously the thumbnail is the last thing that I generally do. Now, sometimes I will deliberately sort of pose, I guess, for the thumbnail in the video I'm creating. Sometimes I don't, depends. For this one I have, so I've grabbed the laptop. So all I'm gonna do right here is I'm going to scrub through and just find the point where I like, I guess, the thumbnail. So I think I like that one. So I'm just gonna command B there and zoom in. So what I'm gonna do now is do command R or control R. That's going to do the retiming um, sort of feature. And we're gonna hit this little drop down arrow and we're gonna do freeze frame. And what that does is gives us a little bit of room to work with. Just command B to cut that section. So now we have a little clip here and we can just get rid of that. So we've got this tiny little clip here that we can take into Fusion. It's not super important, but it just is easy to have a little bit of room to work. So what I'm going to do now is with the playhead hovering over this one, I'm going to drag, go over to Fusion. All right, so here we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is probably scale my image so that it's a little bit better framed. So to do that, I'm gonna select the media node and go shift space and add a transform node. So this transform node, I'm gonna zoom in and just do a little bit of repositioning, just a little, nothing huge. Cool, I reckon that looks pretty good. Do that. Now, it seems like it needs to be rotated just a little bit, so I'm just gonna do that just ever so slightly, nothing too drastic. Make sure that we're all good. Awesome. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is put my DaVinci Resolve logo into the scene. So to do that, you can import it through the media pool, or you can kind of treat it a little bit like Photoshop. You can just click and drag. So here it is in my downloads, click and drag. It's going to chuck it into a node. It will also import it directly into your media pool. And if we wanna stay sort of, I guess, organized, we can rename this one. So we can call this DaVinci Resolve logo and click and drag it in. It's going to add it to the scene. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is create a transform node for this object so I can control it independently. So with that selected, I'm gonna go shift space, go transform, and we're going to increase the size a little bit, like so. Actually, we're gonna increase the size a lot. Cool, and I'm just gonna reposition it into the bottom corner here. And let's make it even bigger, so let's go six. There we go, nice and big. And we could leave it like that, or if we wanted to do a little bit more, we could add a glow. So I'm gonna add the glow before the transform. So shift space, type in glow. Ooh, that obviously doesn't look like it's working very well, does it? So we're just gonna play around, merge under maybe. Merge under seems to work a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screen grab of DaVinci Resolve, and we're gonna insert that into the scene. So we're gonna go, Control, well, however you do a screen grab on the machine you're on, for me, it's on a Mac, so it's Command Shift 4. Gets this little doohickey up, and I'm literally just going to click and drag. It's going to save that screenshot to the desktop. So I'm gonna go back here. So if I go to my Finder to desktop, we can drag that screenshot in. You can see it's very much a click, like a drag and drop sort of system here. So we could rename this one as well if we want to. Keep it nice and organized, call it Screenshot. Same sort of thing, we're going to merge it. Okay, so now we've got our screenshot in. We want to, obviously at the moment it's in the way, we need it to match to the monitor because that's what we want. So we're going to add the corner positioning node. So we're gonna have the screenshot selected, hit shift space, type in corner, corner positioner. And then basically this allows us to grab the corners and just align them. And it's doing some funky stuff right now, but Give it a sec and it'll be all good. Hopefully she doesn't crash. So the reason this is kind of looking a little weird is obviously there's a bit of glare on the monitor. We can, if we want, extend it to sort of the very edges. 
just to, I guess, remove most of that glare if we want. I know it's not quite how the screen works, but we're gonna just do that. And what I might do as well is I'm gonna add a blur after that, just so that it's sort of, obviously it's, we just wanna sort of play around with that a little bit. So it's a little blurry, maybe just a one will be fine. All right, so we're kind of getting there. Now the next thing we're just gonna do is maybe put a bit of text. So maybe we'll do like YouTube thumbnails. I don't know, somewhere. So we're gonna add some text. So we're gonna grab our text node, merge it in, and let's type. How about thumbnails in Resolve? And Resolve 16, we're gonna change it to the font that I quite like to use, which is Avenue. And we can go and increase the size if we want. And we can, uh, let's, let's do the opposite for tracking. Let's bring them closer together and then increase the size. Nice. Okie dokie. So let's just, I like generally white text is my preference. What we're gonna do is go to the shader and I'm just going to add an extra shading element. Now, if you haven't had a look at this text note, I have done a full video on it. Check it out in the top hand corner here, but we're gonna add a quick high uh, outline. So we're just going to enable this shader. We don't want it red, we want it black. You can have it a little bit transparent. So now we can see it. And I'm also going to add a black shadow, same thing, relatively transparent, just so you can kind of see it. Cool. All right, next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of a color correction on the my myself. So we're gonna to wanna to do that in between the original media node and the transform node, so shift space gonna do a color corrector right there. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to the shadow. Ooh, that's too much blue. A Little bit of blue to the shadow, and then a little bit of orange, a little bit of orange, Nick, a little bit to the midtones, and a little bit to the highlights maybe. Cool. All right, and then we're gonna to go to the master. We're just gonna saturate the image a little bit more. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it with that. And we can, you know, if you turn this on and off. Yeah, we've done a little bit there. And the last thing we're gonna do is do a little bit of a vignette. And we're gonna add that under the color corrector, well, next to the color corrector, because we want it to be just on the image. We don't really care about it being in front of the logo. So we're gonna have the color corrected, shift space and type in vignette. Cool, it creates one pretty much off the get go. And now we just need to export this as an image so that we can use it as our thumbnail. So we're just gonna to go to the color tab. And so now we just need to grab a still frame in the color tab. To do that, it's really simple. We're gonna to go to view, stills, grab still, and there's the shortcut for it. So grab still, that's gonna save it to our gallery, which is accessible in the top left corner of the color tab. So here is our still image. If right click on that, we can export this image and navigate to where we want to save it. So this one here, I'm going to save it uh, to the thumbnail, save it and name it. And the most important thing is you want to re change this size to JPEG or PNG TIFF, whatever you want to do, just not the default uh, DPX file because it won't be open or most programs will not open except for DaVinci Resolve. So save it as a JPEG, export out. And that is exactly how you create a thumbnail inside of DaVinci Resolve. So there you go guys, that's how you make a thumbnail inside DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully it was pretty easy for you to follow along. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. As you can see, we've been posting a lot this week and more to come. So yeah, until the next video, see ya.